What's up everyone? Welcome back to Just Finish Coding. This is part one of our brand new Connect 4 series on Scratch 3. So let's get coding. Just finished coding. Before I begin, I want to show you a quick preview of what you will be able to accomplish at the end of the series. I'm going to hit the green flag and as you can see, we can move the coin with the help of our arrow keys and when we actually hit the space bar, the coin moves all the way where it's supposed to. Now I'm not going to play through this entire game, but you can actually play the game until you actually win and when you actually do, which I'll be showing you right here, you can see that we have a pretty nice end screen that's going to come in place with a pretty great sound effect. And that is what you will be learning to make at the end of this series. So without further ado, let's get right into our program. For this project, I'm going to be using the Scratch 3 online editor, but if you are more comfortable using an offline editor or like another version of Scratch, please go ahead and do so. Just make sure that you know to perform some essential features like saving a program, running it, etc. I'd also like to mention that everything that I've used in this video and the upcoming videos, regardless of whether it's the art or the code, will be linked in the description below. So you can go ahead to the downloaded files as a Google Drive attachment and download all the necessary sprites. So without further ado, let's get right into our code. The first thing I'm going to do is to actually delete our cat sprite. And now I'm actually going to import all of the sprites which I'm going to be, use, uh, which I'm going to be using. And uh, those are the coins and the board. I'm not going to import the end screen as of now, but we will be doing that a little bit later. So within uh, choose a sprite, click on upload sprite and I'm going to upload all of these immediately. Now you can actually delete this green button and you could use it a little bit later, but uh, I'm just going to leave it right uh, as it is for now and I'll delete it and I'm just going to duplicate the red button and just change the costume and that would have the same effect. So now I'm going to head over to the connect for board and uh, what I'm going to do is to actually resize it. Okay, because uh, evidently, as you can see, the connect for board is pretty small. And uh, you want to actually resize this to be about size 140 and this will make the board a lot bigger and a lot more usable. So within your board, the first thing I'm going to do is to head over to events and grab this block which says when green flag click. And uh, for this project, I'm not going to have like a full fledged thumbnail or anything. I'm just going to have like the game starting as soon as the green flag is clicked. So when the green flag is clicked, what I'm going to do is to actually show it. And although we're not going to be hiding the board, I'm still going to um, add in that block right there. And uh, all I'm going to do is to just have a go to X and Y position. And I'm going to say go to X zero and Y 20. Okay. Or actually negative 20. That's going to be like the position I want to go to. And you should have your board in the exact same position as I am having. Now I'm actually going to head over to this sprite right here, the red, uh, the red button or as it is called or the red coin, whatever. And now I'm going to resize this to be 50. Okay. And now you can see that this uh, sprite is almost the size of the square, or rather ex uh, not the square, the circle, or rather exactly the size of the circle. And that is pretty much how we'll actually be having the connect for game work. We're not going to have like a built in fitted board. We're just going to size it according to like the exact size and aspect ratio that they need to be. So within the red buttons code, uh, we're obviously going to initialize it when the green flag is pressed. And uh, what we want to do right after this is to add in this block of code from looks, which says go to back layer. Okay. And uh, you can find that a uh, little bit scroll down uh, once you scroll down below and you can change that front to be back. And what this is going to ensure is that the, um, the coin actually moves behind the board and not in front of the board. And this is going to give it the appearance of a nice board game and not one which seems like a, you know, like a pretty badly made computer game. So once you have this go to the back layer set up, you need to actually initialize a bunch of variables. The first variable I'm going to be initializing is going to be called um, movement. And this is going to keep track of whether the players can actually move their um, coins or not. And this is since this is going to be a two player connect for game, we're not going to have too much trouble with that, uh, especially since we do not have a computer playing against it. So you can actually set the movement to be for all sprites. And now you can click OK. The second variable I'm going to initialize is going to be called game over. And you guessed it, this is going to be keeping track of whether the game is over or not. The third variable I'm going to initialize is going to be called turn. 
And this is once again going to be keeping track of whether it's player 1's turn or player 2's turn. And uh, just for the record, player 1 is going to be the red button and player 2 is going to be the green button. I'm just going to keep saying button or uh, coin and they are literally the same thing. So just don't get too confused with those. Now I'm going to hide all these variables and I'm going to do a bunch of setting ups. So I'm going to set the game over to be true right, uh, I'm sorry, game over to be false right at the beginning because we don't want the game to end as soon as the green, fla uh, green flag is clicked and that would defeat the purpose. I'm going to set the tone variable to be P and um, I'm going to call uh, player 1 to be P and player 2 to be uh, Q um, just because it's easier to have it that way. And uh, the third variable which is movement will be set to be true right when the green flag is clicked okay you can actually set it to yes or no as well and i'm just going to set it for yes uh, to yes just for some diversity all right so now that you have that uh, out of the way now you can actually get into uh, moving this to the correct position to regulate the movement i'm going to set up another variable which is going to be called column number and this variable is going to keep track of which column this particular sprite is actually over. So right now, uh, it's about, um, it's over about column number four. Right here, that's going to be column number seven and so on. Okay. So right at the beginning, what I'm going to do is to actually move the sprite to uh, x0 and y150. Okay. And this is, these are pretty uh, accurate figures, you can see. And uh, when I hit the green flag, you can see uh, it goes to this position, which is a pretty nice position and it's right over column four. So right after that, I'm obviously going to be setting the column number to be four. So for moving the um, coin, what we can actually do is instead of grabbing a forever loop and then all the if thens, we can actually just head over to events and grab this block of code, which says when key is pressed. And you can change this to be right arrow and left arrow when you're actually coding both of them. So when the key is actually pressed, we're going to have a bit of like a condition checker right here. And uh, I'm going to have two ifs inside one another. Okay. So the first if is going to be checking if the movement variable is set to yes. And if the movement variable uh, is set to yes, it means the computer isn't processing the move and that the player can actually move. Okay. So in case he has pressed the space key, you guessed it, the movement variable is going to be set to no. And in that case, the player just cannot move. So I'm just going to say if movement equals to yes. Okay. And uh, apo I apologize if I said no earlier, it should be move is equals to yes. So if the move is equals to yes, then we're going to have two other condition checks. Okay. The first condition, uh, and you can actually uh, join these two with an and. So the first condition is going to be if the turn variable is equals to P. And P, since this is player one, uh, player one controls the red button. So if turn is equals to P, it means that the red player has to move. And the second condition I'm going to actually check for is if um, the column number is less than seven. And the reason I'm doing this is so that the player can't literally move the um, coin out of the screen. Okay, so uh, I'm, I'm just going to say if column number is not equals to seven, uh, I am sorry for that. If column number is less than seven, that's what we really need. So if the column number is less than seven, then we can actually move. But if it is seven, then it means that the player is already at the edge and we do not want him to move after that. So if these two are, are the, if these two conditions are met, or rather if these three conditions are met, then all I'm going to do is to just change the column number by one. That's pretty much it. So now uh, when you actually hit the green flag, you should see that your column number keeps changing when you hit the right arrow key, but you don't actually see your coin moving. And that's because we haven't programmed that part of our code yet. But before I do that, I'm actually going to duplicate this and uh, I'm going to change this to be if key left arrow is pressed. And uh, now I'm going to set the tone to be P, but instead of the column number being less than seven, I'm going to say if the column number is greater than one. Okay. So if it's less than one, then uh, if it's equals to one, it means that it's at the left end of the screen. And again, in this case, we do not want the column number to be uh, less than uh, one. Uh, we don't want it to be zero and it's going to go out of the screen and all of that. But instead, uh, right here of changing the column by plus one, we'll change it by minus one. And that will actually take care of um, actually regulating the column number. And all that's left is to actually just set up a simple function where the um, button would actually move as a result of a change in the column number. To program that part in, you want to scroll back up to where you had all these things initialized. 
I'm going to go all the way up because this thing is going to require a fair amount of space. Now I'm actually going to have a repeat until and not a forever loop and that's why I had the game over variable initialized so that this loop would actually stop uh, when the game over variable is set to be true. So we repeat until and grab an equals to from operators and you, you're going to say game over is equals to true and you can just put in the game over variable right there. I'm also going to hide the column number variable because we don't really want that to be showing. All right, so now once you have that in place, you, you could just duplicate this if then and put that right into it and you could just remove all these and conditions and just put if turn is equals to p. Now if this is the case, then we can actually show our, um, or we can show our red button and uh, uh, if the turn is not p, then we'll obviously hide our uh, red button. So instead of an if actually, you can just grab in an if else. So head over to control, grab an if else, put in the exact same condition. And uh, in one uh, within the if, we'll just have a show and within the else, we'll have a hide. Now within this uh, if statement, we'll do more than just show. And like I mentioned, we'll have a simple function where the column number leads to a change in the x position. So I'm just gonna have an if then, okay? So if movement is equals to yes, so once again, that condition is pretty important. So I'm just going to duplicate that from below and put that into it. Now, if movement is equals to yes, here's what you need to do. Head over to the motion tab, grab this block which says go to x, y. And uh, for your x, all you have to do is to say, uh, head over to operators, grab a multiplied by, and you also want to grab a minus, okay? And you want to put in the minus within the first two. And what you want to put into the minus is column number minus four uh, times 49, okay? And this, uh, all these figures are going to work only if you use the sprites that I mentioned. And if you are using your own sprites, you might want to do a bit of tweaking to figure this part out. But if you are using my sprites, then this thing should work perfectly for your, um, perfectly for your coins, okay? So now when I actually hit the green flag, now when I actually press the right arrow key, you can see that, well, the coin moves and that's pretty nice. Now an additional thing I will do is to actually just set up the exact same thing to happen when the WASTI keys are pressed. So if key um, A is pressed, that means I'm gonna just say move to the left and I'm just gonna have the pretty much uh, pretty much the same code uh, right there. And if, the, if key D is pressed, that means that the right arrow key has been pressed. Oopsie, I messed up a little bit there. All right, so if key right arrow is pressed, that's going to be corresponding to the A key as well. So if key, um, not A key, D key. So if key uh, D is pressed, then we will do pretty much the same thing as when the right arrow key is pressed. And that is pretty much the movement of, well, the button sprite. Now what you can do is to just duplicate this. And uh, now you can actually change this to be green button from red button. And uh, the advantage of doing this is that you don't have to code all that once again. And now you can just go to the costumes tab or uh, within uh, choose a costume, upload a costume, navigate through your library's file, just grab this block which uh, grab the SVG file which says green button. And now you can delete that original sprite and now you can see that, well, you have the green button loaded up and ready. Now you might notice some size differences between the green button and the red button. And if you just want to make them the exact same size and you should, you can just change the green button size to be 53, I believe. And that is going to ensure that everything is set up the exact way you want to. Now you do have to make some changes within the code, however. So initially you want to just remove this block which says, you know, set game over to set uh, movement to and all of that. Okay. You can keep the set game over to be false, actually speaking. Uh, but you want to remove all of the other blocks of code. Okay. So remove the set movement to be uh, yes as well. And uh, now here's what you need within your code. So if game over is equals to true, that's going to remain the same. But within your if else, you want to say if turn is equals to Q. Because if you remember, player 2 corresponds to Q and player 1 corresponds to P. Or rather, uh, the red player corresponds to P and the green player corresponds to Q. So if the turn is Q, then we can show ourselves. And again, in the movement, we need to change all of this as well. So uh, if turn is equals to Q, then we'll do the pretty, uh, pretty much the same thing as turn is equals to P. And you can change all of that within your four uh, events. And that should pretty much be all of your movements 
for your um, green uh, button as well. Now obviously uh, you won't be able to move it right now because it's hidden and you can just see your red uh, red uh, sprite or your red button move but we will be getting into actually switching turns a little bit into uh, future tutorials. So as of now this is what you're going to have and that is all you will be coding in this video. If you've enjoyed this video please make sure you leave a like and also don't forget to subscribe and turn on the notification bell. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.